Hello and welcome to a video where we want to apply our knowledge of, of control engineering. Yeah? This time we are talking about the switching controller. Yeah? I've built here a little something. Yeah? I'll show you. Yeah? Here, this is our system. System. Yeah? What we actually want to control is the temperature of this element here. Yeah? This is the, the temperature. Here the temperature is measured at the bottom. Okay. There's a sensor which is touching, which is touching this. So we will measure the temperature and this is our our temperature we want to, to control. Yeah. How do we do this controlling? In between, below here there's a heatsink. Yeah. So you see there is quite something. Also, maybe I show you here. Yeah. There is a heatsink. It's actually a cooler of a CPU. And on the other side, there is the thing we want to we want to control. Yeah? We measure also the temperature of the heatsink here. Yeah? Measure the temperature of the heatsink, but it's just for informational reasons. Yeah? The heatsink is cooled with a fan, yeah? so there is a fan also. Uh, yeah, because if we we are heating this, we need to get away the heat somewhere. There, there our heatsink is helping us. Yeah? So this is this is actually the temperature we want to control. How do we do this? Inside there, this is so-called Peltier element. This is a Peltier element. It is not really does not really look too sophisticated, right? There is one simply one flat thing, yeah? and this one flat thing. If I put, if I apply voltage to those two cables, yeah, if I apply here plus and minus, one side will hot and the other side will get cold. Warmth energy is transported from one side to the other. If I do it the other way around, here plus and minus, then exactly the opposite sides are getting hot and cold. Yeah? But it's just transport, transportation of heat. Yeah? And this is exactly located in here between this part and this part. So we are using a Peltier element to transport heat between the part I want to heat or cool and the opposite part. Yeah? And this is why we need this heat sink here. Yeah? How do we control the, the Peltier element? Well, we said with this this thing here, yeah, this is actually a switch. Yeah. This will switch depending on how much voltage I give in here. Yeah, these lines. Yeah, this is ground. This is one direction. This is other direction. Green is cooling. Uh, orange is is heating up. Yeah, here we have the power supply, and it will simply switch to the Peltier element. Heat or cold, okay? And we will use this as a two point, two point controller, yeah? and we will just bring this to more heat. Yeah? So we will heat this up to a certain temperature. We will use a temperature with with uh, hysteresis yeah? and see how the temperature here is, is reacting. Yeah? How the temperature here at this, this element is reacting. I'm controlling this with the help of a little Arduino. Yeah? And yeah, here we see also the LEDs, they are connected if the heating is turned off or on. Okay? And here we also have an ambient temperature measurement. This is just lying here on the, on the desk to measure the temperature of the air. Huh? This would be a disturbance signal. Okay. We'll turn this on, yeah, and then we see yeah, here I can adjust the, the set point, here I can trigger the set point, so that's that's how this is working. Huh? So let's switch to the computer and see how these these things are working. So what we actually do see now, yeah, I've plugged everything in, everything is working, doing something. Uh, 
what we do see here now is here the temperature we are going to calculate this is the current set point uh, this cool and heat are you know it's also since it is a Peltier element we could also cool and heat so we could also do a three step uh, three point controller but right now we do a two point controller the actual what is actually adjusted is that we are half a degree is the hysteresis yeah? so below the set point and above the set point half a degree celsius is the is the hysteresis the switching hysteresis and here there are the lines which are simply showing the values yeah? so heat is currently zero the the temperature it seems to drop a little bit and so on so I will now raise the, the set point value. Yeah? You see here the set point value is growing. Yeah? Let's say to 40, 45 degrees, something like this. Uh, you also see it here. It's not triggered right now. Okay? It's not triggered right now. The real set point is staying below. Yeah? I'm now triggering this set point, and after I've triggered the set point, we will immediately see that the heat is turned on. Bok. Aha. Uh -huh. Heating. LED is on. Heating is on. And the temperature, is it reacting? Yes, it is. You see here. Switch to only five minutes. Yeah. Here, the temperature is reacting. Yeah. So it seems to be, well, there seems to be some time constants in between. Yeah. Clear. So the temperature is now growing, the heat, the heat is turned on, here above we have the set point, the set point in that will, we will exclude, we will not use it. The air temperature is also not really necessary, that's it. So we should see after we have gone above the, the set point. Yeah, above this 45.91 degrees Celsius, it shall turn off. Yeah, the heat shall turn off. Yeah. We should be actually we should see something exactly like we've discussed before, something like that. Yeah. This we should see if it is a PT1 element. Yeah. Growing. it get it hot it's hot <laughs> oh, it turned off ah it's still growing aha uh -huh. interesting it's still growing so it seems to be not a pt1 element at least there is seems to be some time constants inside maybe we have a time delay element or something like this uh, we have quite an overshoot yeah we want to reach 45 degree and now we have almost 50 50 Ma? Ma, yeah. We sure has. <laughs> it's a lot already. Uh, yeah, but it's dropping. Okay. Let's see. After the temperature has dropped below 0 0.5 degree. Uh, zero, so 45.9 minus 0 0.5. So at uh, 44.4 degree. Yeah. Then it should turn on the heating again and it should periodically switch the heating on and off. Okay. Now it's getting interesting. 45.875 50. Now, yeah, turned on. Yeah, let's see how this is reacting after turning on. Also dropping a little bit, so it seems really we have some sort of of time delay there, uh, ah, but it's reacting. Start to grow. If we have a time delay and we will not be turned on that long anymore, I would expect that the overshoot is not that severe. Uh, let's see if I'm correct. Turn off. Uh. Was not that severe as overshoot. 
but significant. Significant. Yeah? Remember, we only have 0 0.5 hysteresis and we're ending up at several degree overshoot. The undershoot is not that critical. Yeah? What is the undershoot? Let's see. Let's measure. Let's measure. Yeah, we want to see the temperature. A uh, few minimum value 40, 43. Uh, maximum, what have we maximum got? 49. Pooh. <laughs> ah, turning on again. Now we are in this in this periodic switching. Yeah? It does not look that nice, yeah. Because simply it's a real application, not some imaginary uh, idolized transfer function. Yeah? But we are ending up seeing, let's watch 10 minutes, seeing exactly, exactly seeing a similar behavior. Okay? And this will go now on and on. We will switch on and off this heating and be with the hysteresis around the real value. Okay. I will record this for a while. I will make a screenshot and then we will reduce the, the hysteresis and see where is the difference. Yeah, looks, looks periodically. Let's see. Let's measure the, the period, switching period. Here we do have 99.3 seconds and this one was 100.9. So we are wrote around 100 seconds. Okay, So around 100 seconds we have uh, the switching period. Every 100 seconds we are switching on. Okay, for me that's it. I think this is a good picture. I will take a screenshot <clears throat> and then I will change the, the hysteresis, let cool this down and then we do exactly the same with a small hysteresis and see what is the result. Okay. Changed. Now only 0 0.1 degree plus minus uh, hysteresis. It's already cooled down. We are again at 24 to 3 degree. I will again trigger a set point around 45. I have not reached exactly the same value, but it does not really matter. Yeah, so let's book trigger. And let's see how this is reacting now. We should see a little bit faster switching. Yeah? However, since the, the time delay time, I would expect still some overswing. Yeah? For you, I will turn it faster. I have really to sit here and wait until this fish. Switched off. Uh, overshoot, of course, overshoot. Let's see, let's measure already the, the period time. Let's see how big this now is. 81 seconds. Okay. 
So now it's 81 seconds. Before it was 100. Let's see if this is still periodical. Let's see when the next time is, is, is switched on. Seventy-eight seconds, so around eighty. Now we're around eighty, uh, so twenty seconds less. Twenty percent. Okay, so this does again look really nice. I will take again a screenshot, and now I'll change the following. I will change back to zero point five degree hysteresis. However, I will add this. Feedback here, yeah? this, 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 uh, a feedback loop inside, yeah? and still switching control. And let's uh, let's see how this is reacting then. Yeah? I will let this cool down again, and then we'll do the same test again. Okay. So it cooled down now. Uh, what I've done, what feedback I have entered. Look again at this picture, yeah? there is the feedback. So I will simply take the correcting variable and reduce the difference, the controller difference. What I have selected as a feedback, I have selected an I element. However, I do not directly use the, the correcting variable. I use only half, I shift the correcting variable. This means if we heat up, yeah, this feedback will grow yeah? and if we if we not heating up this feedback will already drop again it will not stay constant so zero zero correcting variable does not mean uh, no change in feedback so the feedback will decay over time yeah? so this is actually what I've introduced and this feedback is reducing my my control deviation so here, this is the current situation. Temperature is again at 23 to 25 degree set point. I just put it down and I will trigger again a set point at close to 45 degree. So let's trigger. And here we see the feedback is now growing and the feedback is currently reducing here 1, 1 1.2, 1.3 1 uh, degree Celsius the controller difference. Yeah. So the controller here also in the switch back to five minutes maybe also in the in this graph we see the feedback is growing so the feedback is reducing the controller deviation which is currently here. Yeah. So actually after it would not take long I guess yeah and we will already switched off switch off even if we still have quite a long way to go to our final temperature yeah? but the feedback is big enough to already reduce the, the oh, you see now it happened now it happened and the feedback is now falling again yeah? you see now it already switched off because simply here this feedback has grown to a certain value. This is re reacting, you see, it's now slowing down. Yeah? And since we are not heating, the feedback will be reduced again. This is this integrational behavior I tried to explain before. Yeah? And now, well, we will see the difference is now around 4 degrees, so we will probably start to to heat up pretty soon again. Oh, yeah. We're heating up again. You see the feedback has influence on the switching. And this is exactly what I tried to tell you. Now we're in the phase where the feedback will influence this switching. And we are not, it's in this case, it is preventing this overshoot. You see, now we are we are closing in slower than before. Before we just switched off when we already reached it. Now we are we are a, getting slower to the final value, and this should probably prevent the overshoot. Yeah? 
So right now, this is behaving totally different. And like I said, the only thing I've added is this feedback. Yeah. And you see, it's switching quite often. Yeah. And this is why, this is actually why we have to, to, to use some semiconductor, yeah. some electronics part for it. looks better right maybe we could tweak a little bit the parameters of the feedback so that we that we are stopping here close to the final value but right now this first overshoot totally totally gone okay. let's see what the periodic things look like now. does not look too bad right You see, there is still a ripple. Yeah, there is still a ripple. It is reduced significantly. Yeah, and uh, why we are not seeing a pure thing like this here, like we've calculated here? Yeah, simply because we used here a two-point controller without without hysteresis. And I will do that here as well. Okay. So I will also use a two uh, two-step controller in the next approach I will use a two two-point controller without hysteresis and then let's see how this is working then uh, let this finish now this to have a, a nice a nice drawing again which we can compare yeah I will shut up that we can speed up Okay, so I guess this is already a nice picture. I just measured. It's a period of a 57 seconds, so around 60 seconds. But we have two time switching in between. Okay. This is how this looks like. Now I will reduce the, the uh, hysteresis to zero and try it again. Let it cool down and try exactly the same thing again. Okay, so I will prepare it. Okay, so now I cool down again. Uh, I will go in, have to trigger the set point again to 45 degree, around 45 degree, and see how this is working. Okay. So this time, no, no hysteresis, but with feedback. So your feedback is already growing. Let's see the result there. I would expect much more switching now. Okay. Okay, switched off. Up to now it looked pretty much the same. But now we should see a difference, I guess. Mm -hmm, you see? Higher frequency of switching. Ooh, now even. Tuck, 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 tuck. Quite a lot of switching. See, it's now looking much smoother, not those edgy things, no, not those switching things. See, simply it's switching so fast that you cannot re even see if it, that it's switching. Yeah? Also, also, this feedback value seems now not just be switched, seems to grow a little, fall a little, but no, it's, not, it's not that clear and now here let's see what's happening here we end up in a situation where we are also swinging yeah? 
but the swinging looks not edgy yeah it looks like a sine wave more smooth yeah? this is because this is now behaving like a continuous controller uh, also with continuous controllers we may end up in such sw swinging these are then probably some some delay times in there which we see you know, this uh, we have to cope with our with our adjustments in this uh, in this case i would have to need to adjust uh, the feedback transfer element huh? maybe if this, if this is looking something different then it would also look something different huh? but we see it's again behaving different and this time it is really behaving like it would look smooth, uh, like it's not switching at all. Uh. If we only look at the at the controlled variable, it looks like we're just overreacting with an I, a PI controller. Uh. Pretty much looks like like a PI controller. We'll get to this. We'll also use a. PI or I controller with different continuous controller types on this on this uh, system. <laughs> Call it system. So we'll wait, uh, wait a little bit until this is also have a nice picture out of, of it and then we will compare those pictures. Okay, so I will make a screenshot of this and then we simply compare the things, okay? Ah. Make a screenshot that we can compare and then we will do this. So here now we have it. Yeah? These are the drawings or the, the lines we have just recorded. The first line was simply two-point controller with hysteresis. It looked like that. Huh? Uh, hysteresis was zero, plus minus 0 0.5 degree and we had quite some swing. We had a switching period of 100 seconds, so every 100 seconds we turn on. Okay? Then we reduced the hysteresis to 0 0.1, I think. Huh? What was the result? 0 0.1, yes. So you see, if you compare this and that we have reduced swinging what we expect and we have increased uh, switching, uh, switching uh, frequency uh, so here we are switching every 80 seconds here it was 100 seconds absolutely visible here again the same switching period now 60 seconds hysteresis 0 0.5 so actually actually comparable to the to the upper part uh, to this and this but with this feedback and if you see the feedback how this is reacting and it still looks like switched yeah so this is uh this is because we had this hysteresis and if we also get rid of the hysteresis it looks like that uh, and here you can see well there's some heavy switching going on with uh uh, mechanical contact this would be a bad thing but with electronic contacts this is working yeah? and you see the result is much better than this yeah? switching controllers yeah? now you know how this looks like with a real application application yeah. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.